Hello, and welcome to Home Space and Reason, a podcast about creating a home that thrives. Hi there, I'm Christina Browning, your host. If you know your home could be so much more than it is, I discuss home functionality, aesthetics, and automation. I'm a realtor in Portland, Oregon, and a home functionality coach nationwide. I geek out on every subject imaginable regarding your home and yard, challenging you to think of your space differently to get the most out of every square foot. I pose questions for you to think through about your space and your reason. This podcast is all positive, offering you virtual fist bumps and celebrating every win. Remember, there's no such thing as perfect, but you can still aim for your best every day. In this episode, let's discuss traditions. Episode 51 Change is constant, whether it's in seasons, jobs, or politics, change tends to manifest nervous anticipation of what is to come. One of the best ways to cope is to focus on what is stable, and this is where traditions come in. Psychology Today tells us that embracing family customs or personal rituals can be a powerful grounding force and a reminder that in an evolving world, some things are constant. Traditions are rituals families create and maintain and then participate in them over and over. They bring meaning to our year and lend a certain spirit that nurtures us, gives us a sense of belonging, and helps us have many things to look forward to. More importantly, traditions create positive memories for children. We crave the warmth and promise that comes with traditions. They provide a sense of history and memories and belonging. Dr. Helen Farrell said, handwriting my annual Christmas cards and running a half marathon every spring are some of my personal traditions. The acts themselves are less important than the predictable and comforting senses that each activity arouses. These acts prompt a sense of nostalgia and make me feel more secure. Positive emotions are essential for anyone to adapt in a healthy way to the changing world that we live in. Traditions don't always have to be attached to a holiday. My husband had a tradition in his fraternity, Sigma Nu, on the first 70 degree day of the year to throw a party. Never knowing quite when that would be, it was always a reason to celebrate each year because it meant good weather was on its way. I love this idea. We have big sliding glass doors that accordion open, letting the inside and outside merge together. So our version of this tradition is to open our big doors for the first time that year and crack open a cold one, toasting to the sunshine ahead. Your version could be anything. What will you do on the first 70 degree day of the year? On the opposite end of that same concept is celebrating the first snow of the year. Celebrating the first day of snow is a beautiful way to appreciate this season too. The website montanahappy.com suggests sitting out on your front or back porch with appetizers and toast to a breathtaking night. This tradition will become one of your favorite snow day activities. Have a bottle of champagne in the fridge waiting for this yearly event and serve the kids sparkling apple cider or maybe even cocoa. Make appetizers like a cheese plate or smoked salmon sandwiches and enjoy the show. Comfy outdoor chairs standing by with cozy blankets to stay warm make this a perfect evening. Another idea is to switch out the sheets to flannel on this specific day. Bake a fresh batch of snowflake cookies to dip into your hot cocoa. Others take this cue from Mother Nature to hang out the bird feeders every year and let the bird show begin. Many people think of traditions 
as what is on the table for Thanksgiving. But holiday traditions don't have to be food centric and they don't all have to be focused on gathering. Although that's wonderful when you can, if you set yourself up for success, there can be much to look forward to. I love this idea for a new tradition that has nothing to do with gathering in groups. Do some ancestry research about your heritage and find a new recipe in accordance to that to make specific for that part of the world. Experimenting outside our comfort zone while still being in our own kitchen can be a really fun event for your whole family. Turn on the music and pour yourself a glass of something delicious and get to cooking that new recipe. FamilySearch.org has an article about embracing your food heritage, and I'll link it in the podcast notes. Learn about your Italian heritage and then set about trying to pick out a new Sicilian recipe to make. I enjoy seeing photos of people who have recreated the same photos of themselves when they were younger. Why not put your immediate family in the same position every year? Have people stand in the same order every year and wear the same color every year. Doing this year after year can be a delight once you look back over the years. Earth Day is an annual event celebrated around the world on April 22nd to show support for the environmental protection and celebrating Mother Nature. First celebrated in 1970, it now includes events coordinated globally by the Earth Day Network in more than 193 countries. Can you plant a tree every year on April 22nd? Or maybe this year would be a good time to have solar panels put on your house and aim to have it completed by April 22nd. Could you put on some gloves and grab a trash bag and go pick up litter somewhere? Could you find out how to recycle if you currently aren't doing that? Baby steps forward here is good. It's worth celebrating. Pick a baby step and make it happen with a deadline of April 22nd. Founded in 1979, the Shamrock Run takes place on or around St. Patrick's Day, and it's Portland, Oregon's longest traditional running event. From family fun to the iconic beer garden, distances and routes for all abilities, from the one-mile leprechaun lap for kids to the half marathon, all the races start and finish at Tomacall Waterfront Park, offering sweeping views of Portland's skyline, the Willamette River waterfront, and at least seven unique bridges. The post-race finish line festival warms both runners and spectators. Here's the important point I want to make with this. Many of these events have people walking, so if you've never run a day in your life, this could be a great goal just to participate and it could serve as a deadline of sorts to be more active because you're going to get out there and do it every year. Not to win, just to finish. You could do this solo or with your partner when being around others en masse is safe to do again. It's a wonderful, healthy tradition. The Cupid's Undie Run is a mile run held during Valentine's Day weekend where participants dress in underwear or bedroom attire. Hosted in 27 U.S. cities, the race has raised millions of dollars for the Children's Tumor Foundation. On February 2nd every year, groundhog burrows across America are closely watched for their powers to foretell the weather. Rumor has it that if it's cloudy, the groundhog will emerge from its burrow and spring will come early. If it's sunny, it will return to the burrow and winter will continue for six more weeks. This tradition has been around since the 18th century, and the biggest celebration these days is in Puxatawney, Pennsylvania, the state where the tradition originated and made famous by the 1993 film Groundhog Day. What will you do for Groundhog's Day? Did you know there's a Groundhog Day song? It goes, we'll light the big green candle and eat some rhubarb pie. Give me a kiss, it's Groundhog Day and groundhogs do not lie. So maybe it's a good day to make some rhubarb pie or kiss? <laughs> 
May 25th, 1977 was the day the original Star Wars movie was released. And there are families who celebrate all things Star Wars related. So do you do something traditionally on May 25th? It could be more than a movie marathon. For my son, it would be a fantastic way to celebrate movie making and each year make a stop motion movie created with just the iPad and things we have around the house. I have become a fan of my dress up bin, which started as a place to collect my Halloween costumes and accessories, but morphed into a place that we store all costumes, wigs, glasses, and more for reuse for everything from spirit week at school to running events where we dress up silly. The breast cancer race for a cure is a great example where most participants don all things pink from glasses to running pants with tutus over the top. The series of 5K runs and walks raises funds and awareness for the breast cancer movement, celebrates breast cancer survivorship, and honors those who have lost their battle with the disease. Let's face it, dressing up is fun. It's silly and you simply carry more smiles on your face when you're dressed up than when you're not. So if you don't already have a costume bin, start one and declare yourself a reason to dress up at least twice a year. That shamrock run I referenced earlier, yep, I've got bright green knee socks with shamrocks on them and a green leprechaun hat to go with it. The more ridiculous, the better. The vast majority of people get in on the fun, so this dress up bin serves us year round. You can also make a tradition of celebrating your birthday week and not just the actual birthday. This isn't necessarily gifts every day, but more like making each day just a little more special. We're doing this activity today because it's your favorite, or we're having this breakfast today because it's your favorite. Some people pick out a new holiday ornament every year. We add a metal ornament each year with our photo on it, along with the year printed there. In 30 years, it will be a true memory lane photo tree. We also have a smaller modern artificial tree that's really skinny and about five feet tall that's just for upstairs, and my son decorates this tree every year. That's his tradition. He has special ornaments for it, and he loves it. Do you count down the days until Christmas with paper chain links or decorate for Halloween every single year specifically on October 1st? Maybe you make it a point to go ice skating every December or make a huge deal out of decorating for Christmas by adding some special hot toddies simmering on the stove or a Christmas decorating day stew that simmers all day long, filling the house with warm smells. All the while, your decorations are transforming your spaces. I love the idea of taking a week that means something to you and sampling your way through the week. Whether it's trying a new beer, wine, or whiskey each day of the week of December 5th to celebrate the end of Prohibition, or throwing a bunch of chicken wings on the Traeger and sampling your way through some new hot sauces, sampling is just plain old fun, and it's an easy tradition to embrace if you pick a week that means something to you. Embrace a sport that you aren't particularly bananas about. I'm not personally into horse racing, but you'd bet I'd be game for a derby party. It almost always happens on the first Saturday in May, and it doesn't have to be a party of 12 or 80. It could be a party of two. Get your derby hats, place some fictitious bets, and drink the traditional mint julep. The mint julep has been the traditional beverage of Churchill Downs and the Kentucky Derby for nearly a century. Each year, almost 120,000 mint juleps are served over the two-day derby weekend at the Churchill Downs racetrack. I'll tell you what, one of the best documentaries I've seen lately is about horse racing. Use the Kentucky Derby weekend as an excuse to watch Born to Run, a one-hour documentary focusing on the first crop of horses by 2015 Triple Crown winner, American Pharaoh. It makes you feel like you're there and helps you to understand all the intricacies of the sport. Narrated by Ashley Judd, it's entertaining and very well done. 
The ritual of cutting your own Christmas tree down can be a whole day long event from doing an extra big omelet in the morning because it's tree day and taking a family photo in the field with the saw and boots, tree and hats. This sometimes makes for the best Christmas card photo or just a great framed photo to pack away with the holiday decorations and bring out every year just for this season. The lighting of the bayberry candle for health and prosperity. You light the candle when the first star appears. Most importantly, you must time the lighting of the candle so it will stay lit until after midnight. Legend has it, it will bring a year of prosperity and good fortune to the house. For families who are trying not to have so much stuff, this bayberry candle tradition is a great one. Bayberry candles are usually olive green in color and have a nice scent that permeates the house. Burning the bayberry candle has been mostly a North American East Coast tradition since colonial times for both Christmas and New Year's. The bayberry candle poem says, These bayberry candles come from a friend, so on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, burn it down to the end. For a bayberry candle burned to the socket will bring joy to the heart and gold to the pocket. Earl Nightingale said, We become what we think about. So notice your self-talk and your thoughts. Keep it positive. You have two choices about every situation. You can find the good or you can find the bad. You will find whatever you want to find. So if you go looking for a reason to have a bad attitude, you'll find it. Likewise, with the good. What about creating a monthly tradition of the happy me day? Maybe it's on the first day of every month, or maybe your favorite number is eight, so you'll do this on the eighth day of each month. Make it a half hour or one hour chunk of time dedicated to just you and your goals. This gives you 11 check-ins per year and one planning session. How would you like your life to be in five years or 10 years? Write down some goals and think about what you can actively do on this day each month to move yourself closer to these goals. Maybe you could enroll in an online class. If you really want to have a gorgeous yard and you're frustrated with how it looks, A landscaping design class simply for personal enrichment could be so good for your soul. Investing in time for yourself, creating a monthly tradition to honor your future could be life-changing. Maybe you treat yourself to a bath bomb on that same day and a brand new audible book. Whatever it is, it should be personal to you and honor your plans. This monthly tradition is all about paying homage to all the good that lies ahead. And now, get your pencil. It's time for the questions to ask yourself about your own traditions. Question number one. Have I taken the time to look into our family's heritage? And could we start celebrating a holiday from our country of origin or our heritage by making a new recipe each year specific to that culture? Question number two, what big dates exist specific to our family that we don't currently celebrate? For example, my cousin is adopted and her family celebrates her gotcha day, which is the day they brought her home from the adoption agency, totally different from her birthday. My brother got drafted by a major league team fairly far down on the draft, but nonetheless, wouldn't it be fun to celebrate the day he got the call every year by a deep dive into baseball? A celebration of America's pastime and history all wrapped into one. That night, we could tune in to the PBS documentary on Jackie Robinson Part 1 and 2, have a beer and ballpark hot dogs for dinner, and play some catch in the backyard. Okay, so maybe you weren't drafted but love baseball. This could line up with opening day. My brother has a buddy from college that goes into Kay's Bar in Selwood every opening day of baseball and hangs out the whole afternoon and evening to watch the games and celebrate. It's definitely become his tradition. Question number three. What passions are specific to us that we could celebrate? 
For example, if you're a music nut and you love Prince, why don't you celebrate his birthday June 7th every year? Listen to his entire music collection that day, watch the movie Purple Rain or Graffiti Bridge, and do a home karaoke session in his honor. Make yourself a purple cake for dessert and toast to his life and legend. Question number four, what foods can we celebrate that are specific to us? I'm a lover of mushrooms. It's in my list of top five favorite foods. October 15th is National Mushroom Day. But if that doesn't resonate with you, because it doesn't resonate with me, I love planning a big mushroom dish for our main meal on the first day of fall, the season that most wild mushrooms can be harvested in Oregon. Every year, I make a new recipe that I've never tried that's based around mushrooms. You could also plan a mushroom hike event for you and your family and head outdoors for an adventure to find morales or whatever grows near you. One thing that is key to making these ideas happen is to add them to your calendar, and I don't just mean the day or the idea. Add planning of it the week before. You'll need to add some prep to your calendar so you don't forget and it's not stressful. The whole point of this is to bring in more reasons to be happy, more things to look forward to, and create an annual tradition that gives you comfort. So figure out how you can follow through in a way that suits you and your family. Incorporating time and sanity savers into your life is paramount to keeping stressors at bay. One of the things I swear by is coming up with a menu for the week and shopping for it all at once, eliminating multiple trips to the store in a week. Listen to episode number three to learn more about incorporating time-saving automation into your life. I have gift certificates available for home functionality coaching sessions, so you can ask your partner for a session with me as a gift. Sometimes we aren't quick to spend money on ourselves, but now you can ask for coaching to create a home that thrives. Head over to my website, spaceandreason.com, and click on the Imagine link. Subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already and join the private Facebook group called Home, Space, and Reason because the things I reference here, I post images of real time there so it's easy to post questions and chime in with like-minded people. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest by searching the handle space and reason. Did you know that you can hire me? Yep. If you happen to live in the greater Metro Portland, Oregon area, and you'd like to hire me as your home functionality coach or as your realtor, reach out to me through social media or my website. So I need a quick favor. A podcast with a slew of reviews is like a club everyone wants to get into. So if you've been listening to these episodes, do me a favor and write a little something honest. There's a zillion podcasts out there and reviews are the thing that help people decide whether to give this podcast a shot. Thanks for being here with me today. I'm so excited that you're listening. I look forward to hearing about your traditions, both old and new. Set yourself up for success. Put the ideas you want to start on a post-it and get them added into your calendar. Thanks for sitting in on this conversation about creating a home that thrives. Tell your friends if they haven't heard, and I'll meet you back here for the next episode. (laughs) 